The rest of us can turn our Bibles to 1 Thessalonians this morning. 1 Thessalonians. I think I've got my video on. And doing well if I've accomplished that this morning. But I uh, hope not to preach too terribly long to you this morning uh, since we've got a, a dinner after and the, honored the veterans today and uh, some of those things that... Uh, we did. We'll celebrate the Lord's Supper, but uh, I want to give you a uh, want to give you some thoughts this morning, and uh, something that I hope will be a blessing to you. But I hope it'll be an encouragement, and uh, and hopefully uh, uh, maybe something that we take with us and think on, and uh, which is always what we hope. But uh, uh, something that we might uh, again dwell on for a moment concerning our walk with Christ and our Christian life. But First Thessalonians chapter five. We'll begin reading in verse fourteen. Paul writes, Now we exhort you, brethren, <clears throat> excuse me, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men, see that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the Spirit, despise not prophesying, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. Brethren, pray for us, and greet all the brethren with a holy kiss. I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read unto all the holy brethren. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. And this is the close of the uh, letter, uh, the first uh, letter to the church at Thessalonica by the Apostle Paul. And this morning I want to preach to you some things, and uh, I've actually got two titles. I'll give them both to you. And, uh, but it's either Living While Waiting or Shining While Waiting. And I'll explain that to you shortly. Let us pray and ask God to bless His Word. Our Heavenly Father, we're thankful for the day, for what you've given to us, thankful for a time that, again, we can gather in your house. We're thankful for being able to uh, to honor our veterans today, and Father, for just the good spirit that we felt, and for our prayer requests, we ask that you'll meet those still. Lord, we just pray that you'll bless the preaching of your word and the class in the back. Father, I just pray for your help this morning. I ask that you might fill me with the power of your spirit. May I convey that what you've laid upon my heart, and Father, again, may it uh, may it encourage and uplift and uh, compel us to to live for you in this lost and dying world. Father, bless in the class in the back. And we just ask that you'll bless this time together, and we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. As we uh, consider this passage, if we went back to the front of this chapter, Paul addresses some things concerning the uh, coming of Christ. And matter of fact, he closes this letter uh, and giving attention to the return of Jesus. And uh, he reminds them about some things. Uh, the church at Thessalonica, he says they are to know these things, but he reminds them that the coming of Christ is without warning. He says it'll be as a, as a thief in the night. Uh, they don't expect the thief. The thief comes without warning. The coming of Christ is going to be that way. Matter of fact, we are to live in expectation of that. The next uh, uh, event, uh, Christ, uh, his return to the air to, uh, to take us believers up, and uh, that'll uh, funnel in or start the, uh, the next few events on God's timetable, and we, uh, we are to expect that. We are to live expecting. Matter of fact, it ought to motivate us because we know that Christ is coming, that uh, we want to live to serve him. We want to live to please him. And may we uh, put our lives in that place that we might honor him with the time that he has given us as we look forward to his coming. And if we uh, don't leave this world through the, through the gate of death, we look for that glorious return of Christ and uh, the first return in the air, uh, seven-year great tribulation. Then he'll uh, come back in that second advent and come back to this earth to rule and reign and, and us believers with him for a thousand years. And what a uh, what a neat thing it is, God's program of the things to come. And so uh, Paul's reminding them of this. He says that as this letter, he says, give some attention to the return of Jesus. It's going to happen without warning. He reminds them to be ready. He says, but you, brethren, in verse 4, are not in darkness that the day should overtake you as a thief. He said, you are to know these things. And then he reminds them as he closes this book in verse 23, uh, that they are to be uh, living for the Lord. And he says that he prays, uh, God, your whole spirit and soul and body will be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so he reminds the Thessalonians, 
that Christ is coming. And matter of fact, if you went back a chapter or so, he dealt quite a bit with the return of Christ, that coming in the air. He mentions it here, but he's reminding them that Jesus is coming. We are to be living right. We are to be ready. And it ought to overtake us as it would the lost and as a, a thief in the night, as he said. It'll come like that. It'll be without warning, but it ought to overtake us as that way. We are to live in expectation. But he reminds these believers here that they're children of the light. Oh, that we might remember that. You know, we have been called out of this world as those that have trusted in Christ. If you've believed uh, on the gospel of the death, the burial, the resurrection of Christ, he's your savior. He's come into your hearts. You've had your sins forgiven. You've trusted that finished work of Calvary. It makes us a believer, a child of God. And we've truly been transformed. We're no longer a, a, a child of darkness, no longer a child of Satan. We now uh, have a home in heaven and we've been left in this world to be a light for Christ. And that's exactly what scripture bears out. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 16 says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And so we are called to be a light into this world. And uh, he gives some admonition unto these believers. He tells them to be sober in verse 8. And that's not just, not just talking about uh, leaving strong drink alone and not uh, drinking those things, um, which that's something they should do anyway. Uh, I think the Bible forbids that. And uh, matter of fact, teaches much against that. And uh, what, a, what a travesty that, uh, that is in our land. Uh, matter of fact, we don't hear much said about that, but I think the Bible speaks about that. And we should be sober. We should uh, leave those things alone. But in this case, I think it speaks of us uh, not just being uh, that, but being of a sober mind, a watchful, discreetful mind, being awake and alert to those things that are coming. He tells us to be armed in verse 8, uh, that uh, again, we want to put on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. He speaks of that. He talks about us to be living for Christ. He mentions that in verse 10. Uh, he says that who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. And matter of fact, that's a promise to us. That matter of fact, as believers, uh, our eternity is secure. And that, uh, that sleep there, speaking of death, and whether, whether we're alive in this world, whether we're already together with Christ, we have those promises and they're precious to us. But we are to be living while we're here. We are to be encouraging. He says in verse 11, Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. And so he tells us to be encouraging. Believers are to be children of light. And uh, we're to shine while we wait on the return of Christ. And so how do we do that? How do we live a life that's living for the Lord, that's shining for him while waiting? Matter of fact, I think Paul gave the rest of these things and he gave them up to that. I know I've preached out of some of these sections a lot. I've preached on some of these different verses quite a bit. Matter of fact, the one that stands out in the middle because uh, you see much about Thanksgiving, even though uh, it is amazing how the... Uh, uh, the marketers, they want to leave uh, one thing and go to the next. Halloween's become so big and uh, not always the uh, greatest of holidays as Christians are concerned. But it seems like they, they run all the merchandise for that and then they sort of go right into Christmas. And sometimes they forget that, uh, that day that we find that families gather and Thanksgiving Day. And that should be a day of importance to us, uh, uh, not just because of what it's set aside, but actually it's an attitude that comes with folks. We ought to be a thankful people and the verse in the middle of this reminds us to, uh, in everything as believers, to give thanks. But how do we come to this place of living and shining for the Lord while we're waiting for him to come? And as a believer, that's what we're left here to do, to live for him. But we want to do more than just exist. Hopefully we want to do more than just occupy some space. And that we want to shine as a light into a dark world. Because that's what we're called to do. And throughout scripture, you'll see that analogy made. The fact that believers are uh, a light in a dark world and we are called to be light and uh, we're to be that city on the hill as the illustrations used in the Gospels and we're to be just that. So how do we go about that? I want to give you three things this morning and I think that some of these later uh, admonitions given by Paul can be divided in some of these and we can look at it. But it's something they're sort of simple and they're sort of plain forward from Scripture. But I think it would help us if we realize that we walk in a world and it's truly a dark world. You know, we mentioned in some of our prayer requests and just thinking of our country, uh, we long for the days that our country might uh, return to times when people are safe and that 
uh, and you're thinking you could walk the roads. As a matter of fact, we appreciate the uh, small community we live in sometimes. That, uh, but even then, sometimes it doesn't seem safe necessarily. And when you look on the news, you see all the uh, just the things of violence that take place within a week's time, and and it just seems so, so tragic and so awful. And some of those things happen just because accidents do happen, but some of them are truly just acts of violence and acts of uh, just people taking harm upon others and, uh, again, just sin, really. And just a nation that we live in that seems like it's consumed with, with sin and little respect or care for others. And we look at that and we think, what, a, what an evil place that we live in. And sometimes we may question, well, what are we to do as believers when we live in such a, uh, such a land of, of evil and such a place of sin? How are we to, to rise above that? Well, first and foremost, we have to realize that some things we're called to do is to be not of ourselves exactly, and uh, not to just focus on us and what we need. And I understand there's a place and a time we have to take care of us first. Uh, you can't pour out of an empty cup. We got to realize that. But in this uh, particular scripture, uh, we're admonished to think of others. As a matter of fact, Paul uh, speaks of that and. And he starts when he's talking about that some that he says, we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly. And he speaks of others. He speaks of the unruly in that same verse. He talks about comforting the feeble minded. And he talks about support the weak and be patient toward all men. And so we first consider some of those that he said that it's not of just us, that we're to look on the things of others. And if we're going to shine as a light in this world uh, for our God, and we're going to shine as a Christian that it comes with our interaction unto others, that we might be a light unto them. And some of them will be unruly. Some of them may be wicked, as we might say. And they may not be, uh, obviously, uh, following the truth of God's word, and they're not uh, living right, as we might say. They're not, uh, they may have a very sinful life, but hopefully uh, we, again, we warn the unruly, and hopefully we do that in kind and compassionate and Christian ways, but we're to stand in that gap and to do that. But again, may we, it mentions the feeble-minded, it mentions the weak, and it comes back to us as believers having a compassion for others. And may we realize that if we're going to shine as a light of this world, it's not just about self, but it's about seeing other men. It admonishes us to be patient and good to all men. It mentions that in verse 14, be patient toward all men. And then also in verse 15, but it says, ever follow that which is good both among yourselves and to all men. You know, what if everybody who named the name of Christ just decided that they were going to live like that in this world? I mean, I'm saying those that uh, claim, there's a lot of them who claim that they know Christ. Uh, unfortunately, I, I, we, we beg to differ and question some, and, and it's not our place to look on their heart, but sometimes their actions seem completely different than what God's Word says, and so it does bring a, a question at times. And again, that's uh, not, a, not our place to view a man's heart. But uh, again, their actions, but what if they followed that? What if Christians decided we're going to be the patient and kind people in this world and we're just going to live and shine as a light unto Christ and treat others as God would have us to? Oh, the world might be a different place. Oh, that we might even see the unruly. We might decide to warn them and uh, to warn those who are non-Christians that, uh, that there is a coming of Christ, that there is an eternity to face and hell is real and sin needs to be took care of and that Jesus paid that sin debt on the cross at Calvary and all oh, that we might realize that it's not just of self that we might live unto others. Secondly, this morning, if we're going to shine as a light for Christ, uh, that it's not just in realizing that it's not of self, but it's not in silence. You know, there's two or three very short verses uh, right here and uh, sometimes as a, as a child going through uh, Sunday school and all that, uh, if you needed to memorize a verse for something in particular, sometimes Sunday school teachers would have that. You would open up to this passage because uh, two of these are very short and they're very easy to remember. But oh, that they might carry so much weight that even as adults, we might not only memorize them, but oh, that we would just put them in practice. And we would realize that if we're going to shine for a light of Christ in this world, that it's not going to be in silence. And I say in silence because you think, well, we need to go shouting and screaming and and doing that, not necessarily doing that, but notice what these next verses say, and they all speak of communicating in some way, shape, form, or fashion. And they mention first about rejoice evermore in verse 16. Pray without ceasing. Verse 18, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. 
And if we're going to shine as a light in this world and not be silent about it, it'll come through praise and prayer and thanks. Oh, how powerful those things are. You know, if we would learn to just praise our God for what he's done, and maybe when the world sees it and the world understands that we, we give glory to God for what we have in our life, and maybe even uh, uh, those things, and times may not be perfect for everybody, but we realize that God is ever with us. You know, even though we walk through the valley uh, so often in our world and so often through our Christian walk, it seems like we think, well, we're just con constantly staying in a, in a valley and those things are tough at times. But yet we still, we never walk that valley alone. And oh, if we would just take that and realize what a blessing that is, that, that maybe again, not everything is perfect in our world, but if we praise our God for what he's done for us, what he provides for us, and even the, the blessings in the valley and the lessons that he teaches us. And oh, maybe when we're up on the mountain and things are going well, may we not get a lax in realizing that God has blessed us and that we return praise unto him. Praise is a powerful thing. And I think especially as we speak of a, a month and we think of Thanksgiving, we think of being <laughs> thankful, that it begins with praise. And it begins with a heart that turns to our God, and our Savior. If nothing else, he saved us, and we have a home in heaven for all eternity with him. May we praise his name for the good things. And that's just not all that he does. Matter of fact, that second thing we mentioned, prayer. May we not be in silence. You know, there's nothing that, uh, excuse me, that prohibits a Christian uh, from praying in this world. You know, so many people say, well, I can't do this. I can't do that. And they start listing all the things they can't do for the cause of Christ and for serving the Lord. But you know, we can all pray. And we all should pray. As a matter of fact, we should be ever in prayer, as this particular uh, uh, verse reminds us, to pray without ceasing. And I think that's an attitude of prayer. And that uh, we're able to take things to our God at any time. And we realize that he's there and that we can uh, just speak to him just as, he, just as if he was walking beside us. And we turn and we tell him what we have need of. We tell him what others have need of. I find most of our prayers tend to be for the the help of other people, maybe for healing, maybe for guidance, maybe for uh, direction, for something, uh, for comfort in their lives, for something just as we mentioned our prayer request this morning. Most of those tend to be for someone else we know, and hopefully uh, we pray through those names we know of and other people. And I, I hope that we're a praying people. Our country needs prayer. People need prayer. They need Christians. As a matter of fact, we find throughout Scripture how powerful prayer is. And we're reminded in James that it's the, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man that availeth much. And that if you and I would just realize the power that a Christian has when they go before our God in prayer, that prayer changes things. It truly does. But oh, what a relationship it builds with us. You know, um, we so often talk about, uh, you know, families and relationships and all of that. And uh, today's society seems to, to take some of the things away uh, uh, you know, every now and then somebody will share a picture of uh, their family together and they'll sort of joke about it. They'll all be sitting around the table and everybody's got a, a phone out. And they're all looking down doing something else. And, and, and in some ways, what a shame that is because we, we have come to that place where everybody seems preoccupied with that and we no longer seem to communicate and to talk. As a matter of fact, as, uh, as you get older and uh, as I've mentioned before, as a parent, you want nothing more than just your kids to come and spend some time with you. You enjoy that. You enjoy that fellowship. You enjoy that time. And you think even as you walk along and you speak, and even with a husband and wife and spouse, uh, that communication and stuff, if you go through and it seems like you never talk, you never know anybody, uh, what, a, what a pitiful place that becomes. And all that we might take even like those earthly relationships, and we need conversation and we need talk and that, but all that we might pray and talk to our God in such a way that we're just comfortable coming before him and ever pray without ceasing. It'll make a difference in our life. And may we not be silent in prayer, but also not in thanksgiving, ever giving thanks for everything. And you say, well, uh, well, some of these things, how can I give thanks for this? And that's usually how it comes up when people ask and they question that verse. How can we give thanks for what God has allowed me to go through? And sometimes it's very hard to do that. It's very hard to focus on what the Lord has done for us and why we might say, well, why has he put me here? 
A lot of times on the outside or the backside of a situation, when we maybe have come through a storm or a trial, we can look back and we think, well, God, God did all of this during that time. He maybe caused me to focus a little more on Him. Maybe He caused me to pray a little more. Maybe He caused me just to sit down and, and focus on things that are important. He may have slowed me down a little bit. Maybe He did what I needed during that time. He helped me to grow. And even though it was a tough time, we can look back sometimes and we can give thanks truly for all things that God has given us to. But it says in everything, give thanks. Oh, and may we not be a silent person. If we're going to shine as a light in this world, our silence can't be in praise, prayer, and thanks. We have to have a voice in that. Lastly, this morning, if we're going to shine as a light in the world, may it not be in sin. You know, he goes on with uh, this particular admonitions here, and he says, quench not the spirit. We surely don't want to sin against the spirit of God. May the spirit of God lead us. He lives within us as a believer. May we allow him to guide us, to uh, direct us, and doing that through the word. Of course, it says in verse 20, despise not prophesying. So we don't want to sin against the word. We want to obey God's word and take it in. And so we want to do that. I think also in discernment, it says prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. May we discern the good and the bad of this world and learn to live above it. And may we put sin out of our lives. Also in choices, in verse 22, abstain from all appearance of evil. You know, sometimes I don't think the church likes that verse anymore. We seem to want to live uh, in the church in general today, Christianity in general. We want to live right there on the side of that fence. We want to seem like, you know, if this fence and that's the line and that's what the Bible says. As a matter of fact, we question that. Most people want to sit right on the post somewhere. They uh, most of the time they end up falling over on the other side and they're uh, way off and gone. And, and we understand that. But may we come back to a place that we abstain from all even appearance of evil. Because again, that's what God desires. That we would live a life that's holy and pleasing unto him. And if we're going to shine as a light into this world, it's going to involve putting those things that are evil out of our lives. Putting sin away that we might live a holy life unto him. And notice how Paul closes these things out. That he says, and the very God of peace sanctify you holy. And that word sanctify means set apart. We're set apart unto his service, set apart from the things of the world. And may we be those people. And may we, uh, again, allow God to work in our lives that we might shine as a light in this world. Not of self, not in silence, and not in sin. May we live for him as he would have us to. I uh, read a little illustration and I close uh, with that, it was uh, an allegory that was written, and uh, it says it was written for children, probably just to help them understand uh, some of those things about it, but uh, it does uh, bear a great point, and it says, once upon a time, a cave lived under the ground, and again, understand the story, it says, as caves have the habit of doing, and uh, again, we understand that, they're under, it had spent its lifetime in darkness, it heard a voice calling to it, come up to the light, come and see the sunshine. The cave retorted, I don't know what you mean. There isn't anything but darkness. Finally, the cave ventured forth and was surprised to see light everywhere. Looking up at the sun, the cave said, come with me and see the darkness. The sun uh, asked, what is darkness? The cave replied, come and see. One day, the sun accepted the invitation. As it entered the cave, it said, now show me your darkness. But there was no darkness. And essentially... The sun was going to shine wherever it went. Oh, that we might understand that as believers, we have the opportunity to shine wherever we go. And we can shine unto others because that's who we're left here. We're called to be a light unto the world. We can shine because we're not in silence. We praise. We pray to our God. We give thanks unto our God. We can shine because we're not in sin. And we hopefully try to live above those things that God's word condemns and that God says we are to put out of our lives that we might shine into a world that doesn't question us, but it just sees that we're living for something more in this world and shine as a light. The world needs that. God's left us here to be that. May we be that light in this world and may we shine forth as one and we do that until he comes or until he calls us home. Because that is what he's given us to do. This morning, I hope you think on those things. I hope we go out of this place with a desire 
and say, Lord, just help me to be a light. And you say, well, to who? Whoever God puts in our path. Family, friends, people we don't know, the unruly, the feeble-minded, the weak. Whoever God allows us to come into, may we come as a light shining into a darkness. We live in a dark world, but we have a light in us that dispels the darkness if we let it shine. Let us stand this morning with our heads bowed as we close our service.